I think that we need all the help we can defending ourselves against our environment and the environment that we've created. To create a strong defense is to give yourself as much opportunity through fitness, nutrition. The reason why coffee and cream have been used together for ages was because of the effect and the combination of putting fats with caffeine. We're scrambling to kind of create a modern day version of the same effect of really good coffee with really good cream. Proof is in the pudding. When you drink these formulas, the effect was monstrous. Let's talk about this new business venture, yeah. um, the superfood category. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations, by the way, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I think we're really, uh, we're really fortunate. I uh, well, you didn't just start it either, so. Well, no. Okay, so literally 16 years ago, a gentleman by the name of Paul Check, who is an like insanely intelligent, I would call him a movement specialist because it's not a trainer; it's beyond that, and. Um, he was giving ghee, uh, layered coffee with ghee in it, you know, and the two of them would, and they're both, you know, super fit. And I'd be standing over in the corner and watching them get all, you know, jacked up on coffee. And what Laird started doing many, many years ago, I mean, we'd have beans brought in from all, all over the world and was, can this impact my performance? Right. It all started there. Everything with Laird, everything he reads, everything he listens to, the people he spends time with, he goes to bed at 8.30, the can this impact my performance? So what happened is we had um, a gentleman that was a startup brought in for the golf board business, which is an electric standing one man sort of. I've know. seen it, it's very cool. Right, so this was Laird and Don Wildman, his friend who recently passed away, who was 77 when they started the business. And that's been about six or seven years. Paul would be around the CEO and see Laird at his gym in our house, and the guy's like, hey, can you make me one of those coffees? Can you make me one of those coffees? And after literally three years, Paul thought to himself, like, how, what is, like, how hard can it be? Yeah. And within three months, we had samples. And, and so in a way, it was a 20-year love affair for Laird with coffee and using it as performance. So for those who don't know what, it, what we're talking about, yes. what is the superfood? Okay. Look, what is it? Who's so Laird's like superfood uh, is, well, it started with an original creamer. So it's basically vegan. So it wasn't intended like Laird's not freaked out by dairy, but he doesn't like homogenize and pasteurize. So he, it's this, it's food, right? How do we not have um, anything that isn't food? And so it's a combination of coconut and red palm and, and some of the nutrients Laird was using that's powdered with nothing added uh, as far as, you know, chemicals or anything like that. And there's also something called Aquaman because so one of the downsides is coffee is possibly your ability to absorb calcium. And one of the things we're missing all the time is a lot of minerals. So it's this Aquaman, you can't taste it, that, that is added in the creamer. Augments, yeah, okay. Yep, and it's, sea, it's a sea, uh, sustainable sea algae. And so we started with this original creamer that you add to your coffee. So it's basically taking something somebody does every single day and kind of notches it up. So, for example, if you were going to have a myriad of meetings, the fat feeds your brain and the caffeine gives you the energy. Yeah. And because they're together, it's sort of a slow release. It isn't like I go up, I go down. And the other great thing is for Laird, because, you know, really using him as the model, if he was going to go surfing at 630 and, you know, have his coffee with his creamer, he wouldn't need to eat because he wasn't going to come in until 1230. He was going to go out and surf for five or six hours. So also the fat kind of keeps you satisfied and gets you through to lunch. Yeah, and for Laird, it's all about the fuel, right? It's literally, he talks about food as fuel. and It's function. Yeah. But listen, I'm a girl, and I'm a person who I enjoy the experience of things. I am very healthy. Um, I'm not all, you know, all about performance. Laird is certainly living in that zone more. Um, it had to taste good. And it had to, you know, if you're going to do it every day, it has to work on all, you know, you have to check all those boxes, mm -hmm. right? The ingredients first, 
how it mixes with the coffee, and then obviously how it tastes and feels for you and the experience for you. So um, that really happened pretty quickly. Well, yeah. we, we've done a few other businesses, and we have a few other businesses right now. And I will say that that particular start, um, the mistakes were very few and very cheap. And, um, and it, you know, we've been given a real gift with this, with this brand. So then we, you know, he brand, Paul branched out on the flavors. He did the cacao, which I liked, creamer. And because Laird is, uh, you know, obsessive about uh, turmeric or turmeric, um, they have a turmeric creamer. There's Except for the anti-inflammation and all absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Like when we're in Kauai, he's always juicing it and drinking it. And, um, and so he, we have that one, which really is very good. And uh, there's an unsweetened. So if people go, hey, I'm vegan, and I really don't want any coconut sugar because it's sweetened with coconut sugar, which is about the second lowest on the glycemic index. Okay. Uh, you have monk fruit. Doesn't mix good. Doesn't taste, you know, maybe for a tea it would be nice, an iced tea, but not for uh, a yeah. sort of that kind of flavor palette. Um, and then it's gone, it's, you know, there's sort of, a, you know, a bunch of other products, hydrate products and things like that. And these are all kind of stimulated by Laird and what Laird is looking for, but also us looking ahead and knowing, hey, let's get into adaptogens. Let's get into some areas that we could really help people and make it really easy on an everyday yeah. way. So where can I buy it if I want to go get it? Well, you can buy it uh, online. So Amazon has it. The whole line's at LairdSuperfood.com. And now it's like rolling out in Air One, CVS, uh, Okay, so basically Kroger's, everywhere. Kroger's, it's starting to, yeah. you know, do that. It's at, we did a two-pound bag for Costco of the original creamer. Okay. Um, and, and for me personally, like as somebody who talks to people who are busy and have only so much time and so many resources, the thing I really like is we're not asking you to change anything in your everyday life. We're switching out maybe a traditional creamer that doesn't have some of the best ingredients and we're putting something in there and you don't really have to sacrifice the taste or anything like that. So for me, as somebody who understands what it's like to be busy, um, I, I get excited about that. And Laird is pretty cute because people, they really do enjoy the products. And he gets a real, because he, he likes to share. That's the thing about Laird. Yeah. And he's always been that way, like, oh, what, try this, come here, let's try this, drink this, feel this, you yeah. know. And um, this is just an extension of him saying, hey, you know, I want to share this with you. So can you talk about how you guys together are running this business? You're yes. building a brand, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, I'm sure it's getting bigger, bigger. Can you talk about sort of like, we've just discussed where yeah. it's been and where it is now, but like where is it heading and how are you getting there? And again, in the context of people who are watching this show, yes. they're also like you. Either they have a side hustle that yep. may become something awesome yeah. uh, or they're working for someone else and trying to build their brand of the empire. Yeah. Um, talk to us about how you're building the business and, and where it's headed. I think first you have to know, and, and I know everyone that comes on your show says this, is sort of what what is your mission and be very, very clear and committed to that. Because I think once you understand that, it makes it easier. But in the beginning, it was Paul, our CEO, and Laird and I, and then we were working with a lab. Yeah. And since then, what I have to say is our head of marketing came from Condé Nast, Luan Pham, and we our CFO is, you know, he's from Boston. He's a real grown-up. <laughs> so Tom Weatherald. So what I want to say is we are growing a business, but what has happened is we have a team in place that allows us to grow a business. Because Laird and I could want to grow a business and go shake hands all day long and have the best product in the world, but if you don't actually at the right time have the right people in the right places, it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, how, so how are you making it scale? Because if it's on Amazon and yes. in every single store, yes. you, you need more. How are you doing this? Uh, well, and okay. I think people want to know. Because yes, it's... so I'm going to toot uh, Paul Hodges' horn for a second. Yeah. Is Paul, I think, saw early, because this might be his 10th or 15th business. He lives in Oregon. So he bought property in Sisters, Oregon. Laird Superfood bought property and built, we built our own factories very, like almost just about two years in. And, they, and Sisters made it really easy for us, but also the climate had to be such because it's a powder product. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it in Hawaii, it's too moist, right? So even the, the, the climate of the people who work there represent the brand. Yeah, so Paul's a bit of a visionary. Paul is 
he's interesting in that he's a visionary and he looks where all the risk is. How do I minimize the risk? So he, because he's done startups before, which means you've nosedived before, you realize you better manage your risks. Right. And so he was always about how do I figure out the risks? And that was part of the thing about not having a co-packing partner because yeah. every bag is x-rayed. You know, it's just, it, 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 the margins are way higher. I mean, it just is all of that. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, speaking of risks, buying land mm -hmm. uh, two years in sounds risky. Very risky. Yeah. But I think sometimes, <sighs> Laird always says this, you know, he, I, and I think it's because he's in nature, his level of faith that, because he's like, I see the horizon all the time. You know, I'm down here and I'm looking at all the little things and so sometimes I get overwhelmed with all the details. Um, I think we both could feel, like in our other businesses, we wouldn't have done that. So it was also still instinct. You take risk, but I think you're always still managing your instinct on it. So I think even though it's business and it's numbers and it's money in and money out, I think there is got to be a level of gut. Yep. Because if you, I've had other businesses where if you said, should we buy a factory? I'd be like, yes, no, thank you. <laughs> so. So this just felt right. It did. And, yeah. and it felt like it made sense. And, and that's the other thing, right, is how do I step back far enough from this thing that I think is so great to go, is the market in a place? If it was five year, years ago, it still would have been a little too early. Um, and so it's also trying to get informed enough and go, is this, is there even a chance? Is there a market for this? And, um, and I think we all sort of looked at it separately. You know, I'm the sort of original consumer, like the female in the group. And I'm always like, well, the color and the way it looks. And I, when I see it at the store, I need to feel like I would want to try that and eat that. And so it was all the input from everybody um, that I think really helped it move along and move along pretty quickly. That's awesome. I will say this too for people in business. Um, responsiveness. Be a responsive person. Even if it's to say, no, thank you, no, we can't do it, it's not possible. With regards to what? Everything. When people call you or send you a note, be responsive. What I see a lot of in business, and sometimes the higher people get up the food chain, I see either one of two ways. They're either all over the map, and they have all their people around them trying to corral the kittens, or you have the billionaire guy who picks up the phone. And so, I'm just reminding people, like, I, I didn't go to business school, and I've been through a lot of situations. I think you have to learn to create value. That's important. Don't go, well, we should get, because if, you're, if you have a VC guy who goes to Wharton or, or whatever, they're always trying to measure metrics. And sometimes when you have a, a startup, you've got to create value. And that means sometimes going over and beyond and doing the extra and showing up, and it doesn't always make sense, but it feels right. So it may not make sense on that template that they went to business school for, but if it feels right or you go, hey, we're gonna help tell that story with that group because it's gonna make sense for our business, it's worth the extra work. And so I will, I just want to inject that because sometimes people get so locked into to their education that uh, they forget there's so many of these nuanced elements of business that really can help you know, make a business more successful. Yeah, it's it's a, it's good advice. I mean, you're only as good uh, sometimes as your last at bat or your last session yeah. or your last game. Um, you can't just lean on your reputation uh, solely. There's other variables. Um, so then, how are I mean, you've you've to ch to scale this business now? You have some additional help. You have people now mm -hmm. who want to get involved. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So we've had actually. It was very easy to get in investments, uh, investors, and then we recently have. Well, a why new was it so easy? I honestly, uh, when you show them the growth, like this month, we're thirty percent more than any other month. So you you have a reoccurring business. Yeah, it's your, people are doing it every day. So the metrics were something like this: if we if we got you to order the product once. Uh, there was a 30% chance you were going to order it again. If we got you to order it twice, there was like an 80% chance we were going to get you to order it again. So we sort of, there's a way to really measure, because having said all that about business school, you still have to be able to measure it. Yeah, so can I ask, so how long, because I think, you know, a lot of people, they'll try something. Oh. And I see a lot of people, <laughs> even, you know, I have the tendency too to want to quit too soon. Like, mm -hmm. So how long 
between then and now that you are cranking and you've yes. got numbers just to show it and attract you know investments how okay. long did that take well let's let's back up let's say because there's the cranking that's occurred for the last 18 months to two years and sort of the original cranking so the original cranking which is the hardest with the least amount of reward and you know all of these things that took about three years which I want to say is incredibly short I would like to say that but that was the original cranking that enabled us to attract the right team and then the initial investors which then enabled us to create the bigger window of this last crank to the do last it right. 18 months <laughs> yeah it was always it was actually always done right but now for example uh, we have a new partnership with WeWork and they you know there was real consideration and we were poised to actually go public last year and we were completely lined up and there's all the pros and cons of that and we were completely lined up to do it and like I said our CFO is capable and we went through the road show I mean parts of the road show the whole nine yards and uh, Laird had has a relationship as I do with Adam Newman and um, you know they give away a lot of coffee every day mm -hmm. at all their we works and Laird had, believe me, it was not uh, on anyone's mind. We were on Kauai, and uh, Laird doesn't even know what WeWork is. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Like, he's doing his thing. His ocean is his office. Yes, yeah. and he's like, great, you're doing great. I'm happy for you. It doesn't mean anything to him. And if you go, hey, this guy's on a rocket ship ride, and their business is going, he's like, okay. Yeah. Is, you know, is he, how is he as a human being and whatever. Yeah. So he's get, making Adam coffee. And Adam is really on a mission, and his wife, they're on a mission to try to figure out how to support, help, and people, and change, you know, how you educate kids, and like a big mission. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. Um, I'm, I mean, I don't know how they have five young children. I mean, it's all happening. Well, we had Miguel McKelvey on the show, too. Oh, yeah, so you know. And he talked about how it started, and they're doing... Well, we have a WeWork office, but they're also doing We Live and, you know, they're and expanding. And We Grow and Rebecca's yeah. initiative for the school yeah. and things like that. So Adam was really intense. He's, so, he's very intense. Miguel is, seems considerably more mellow. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's probably why things Also from Oregon. Work, yeah. yeah. So, you know, he when he heard that, he's like, oh, you know, oh, you shouldn't, you know. And I think our CEO, we were at a place where we had to either go public so we can continue the growth because the way the thing was going, or it was actually like you know a gift of gifts that WeWork said we're going to come in, and we'll give you enough capital that uh, we can do the expansion at the rate that we want to and get to stay private. So now you're still feeding the objective, yeah. not the bottom line and shareholders, which you know you need more time for that. And so it was, but I will say this, and this is another lesson in business is. Had our CFO not had us lined up in a real way to go public, who was going to call and be, you know, motivated to have to pull the trigger pretty quickly? And I give WeWork a credit. I mean, they really made the move, and it was quick. Yeah. So, but if we hadn't put ourselves in the position, it's sort of like, oh, well, they've asked us out for a date. Okay, no, I want to ask you out for a date. And unfortunately, that's how we humans work. If it's like, oh, well, it's there, and maybe we can get to that in six months because we had a lot of other stuff to deal with. Yeah. Adam really actually said, okay, we're going to look at this, and this is what I'm willing to do, and he honored that, and that was that. And so, uh, yeah, it was, listen, you, you also know good fortune, and you, you can be as smart as you want. Yeah. A little bit of like, hey, thanks, is, is okay too. Well, yeah, and I think you should take full credit for um, living right. You know, uh, I just think the, the lesson there for me is, uh, and you really haven't truly run the turtles, the tortoises race, slow and steady, but you kind of have. You've, oh, you guys no, have, we have, but not in this business. Yeah. But I've dedicated myself to this space for 30 years and layered at the same. And what, what was interesting is Adam, Adam and, and Arik Benzino, who was also there, said to us, um, most people aren't actually living it. And it's funny because I could be maybe more, I could have more of a duality than Laird, but Laird has no choice. Laird is going to live it. Yeah. And what you see is what you get. Yeah. And he's not going to be all slick. And it's just not happening. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't actually care what level of success Lair gets. That's just not who he is as a person. Right. And um, so I think we, we were living it. Um, and the business, however young it actually is, really was born out of all the years before and the failures, by the yeah. way. Well, that's what I was, that was kind of my point is that you, you have, even though, you know, maybe by comparison because both of you have kind of had or still have uh, celebrity <laughs> and all the things that, you know, uh, you know you're on TV. Okay, okay so sure. people would say. Uh, <laughs> Occasionally. People know your name and you've done all these other great things. But um, the way I see it, you, you definitely have been running the tortoise race slow and steady. And the other lesson is that, you know, being yourself really does pay off, whether it's financially, however you measure that. Sure. You know, to have integrity, to law of attraction kind of stuff where you track the kind of people that you want to work with, um, right? Because, by the way, our CEO, if we were putsy at all, I, don't, I, don't, I think even if he, if he saw dollars on the other end, he's the kind of guy, he'd cut it. Yeah. I mean, and that's a good lesson from outside looking in and the other way around. So, like, if you're looking to hire a team, you know, hire the kind of people that are, like you said, either more talented than you or a good cultural fit. People will look at resumes and say, okay, she's super talented. She came from Wharton. Yeah. But that's probably not the best way to hire, right? It's about yeah. how you guys fit, whether it's values or style or vibe. I mean, that's another yeah. good, super good lesson. I think it's, it's very important and also somebody that you can, in a very healthy way, disagree with. Because, for example, I'm quite sure that my CEO and CFO and CMO hit the mats, but I know that they do it in a, with always with mutual respect and also with the clear understanding that, hey, you're my teammate and I trust you and I know you're good at what you do and we're still going to go to the mats, right? It's just, it's the best part. That's yeah. how all the growth happens. Well, and, you know, bring it full circle back to your successful relationship with Laird. You respect each other. You have to. Yeah. Uh, and I think in business, listen, you have to be, I know plenty of people who are successful, and if you just aren't doing it all in every area of your life, in, if you're in relationships, if you're in work, I actually don't care how, it, like whatever it took for you to get successful, at the end, I think I'm, at, I'm of the belief that there's something really hollow in that. But also, if you can do it with a bunch of people that you really care about and you respect, there's, there's not much more that's satisfying than that because you go, well, we, we all have a victory for each other. You know, like if you're my business partner and somehow I can do something that enhances and we have a victory, it's like, that's the good stuff. Not like I won and it's great. It's like, okay, well, congratulations, you know. And I think that's... That's been one of the really gratifying parts of this. And um, I'll tell you something funny. So Laird always said, even when I first met him, I don't know, I just feel like I'm, I'm just going to invent something. And it, I feel like it will make me financially, you know, successful. But I think it will be something that's good for people, you know, good for people. And he said that to me for so long. And then I, I joked with him. I said, well, you sort of have invented something, which is stand-up paddling, which he's made zero dollars from because you don't monetize giant, you know, giant surfboards. And a lot of people are healthier and they get to enjoy the water, be it a lake or a river. Most people are never going to surf on a stand-up board. And I'll bet most people don't know that he's the godfather. No, and nor does it matter. However, I said, so I think you were right. You just had a split vision. I think you did sort of participate in inventing something or bringing it to modern era. But I think actually the thing that you'll probably make, you know, possibly, I don't want to limit Laird or Laird's future, but that I go, who knew it was going to be in creamer and coffee? <laughs> and, um, and it actually makes even more sense to me because it's what he does in his intimacy of his kitchen that he would share and give to people. And I actually think that in ways that represents him as much as his surfing. <laughs>